Quick Stuff question. Ink. Yeah. Yes or no? Leave it on or off? Same difference. Same difference. It's my little dark saber <laughs> light that I have here. I don't think I've shown you. I think maybe I have. Anyways, I think I have enough. Um, <laughs> here, here's your intro. Yeah, Valid. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back to episode 233. Uh, yes. We have a very, very, yes, very do. short episode because not we only have three cards to reveal. Only three. Is that really all? We're not we're not touching that. We're we're not touching that at all. Yeah. And also the members voted, and the members voted no, we don't touch it. So yay. <laughs> Oh yes, package for Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Ah, Mr. Top Deck Heroes, package. Man, another one? What is with this guy? Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Again. Oh, Melody again. Mr. Top Deck Heroes. Oh, oh, package. Heavy. oh God, thank you, that was heavy. What's in that one? Oh, it's training cards. Cards? Was every one of them cards? Yeah. How can you afford that? Oh, that's interesting you say that. I got, I got it from the place. Yeah. Secret. Man, these people are crazy. It's no secret. Oh. 50 cards. Use code TD Heroes for a discount. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Starting us off with some um, Oof, not um. We're well, starting us off with some Imperio support. Oh, yes, now you call I did it, it for you, Hector. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I just it. did it for you. I appreciate it. So, Tuesday stream happened. We saw three cards for Impaldi Imperio, whatever you want to call it. And the first card we're going to start talking about is Hypersonic Conversion Mech Fighter. It's is a it grade a three fighter? rare that has a very interesting ability that's set. Or it is Mock Fighter. Thank you. But it has a very interesting ability that says continuous rearguard during the battle that this unit attacked. If you have four or more auto mod gauges, all of your opponent's rearguards cannot move from rearguard to guardian circle. So it's a intercept prevention, it's a hostage prevention. It's very cool, just you don't get to do your things type of card. This really just says Alden screw you. Alden, Night Rose, um, Liel, if it's running the hostage package, Razel, if it's running the hostage package, Lord, if it's running the hostage package, any card, any deck that's running the set orders that can let you intercept from with rear guards that are on the board. Pretty much, so, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. It's it's very simple and interesting. I like the other two cards more. And Hector, I'm gonna give you the cuter one. This one. Oh, I thought it was a great one for some reason. I'm probably thinking of the other one. So this one it's called, it's a grade two called Roving Probe. That just, side note, I was watching the movie Martian the other day. So this is kind of fitting. Uh, skill, auto drop <laughs> zone. When this card is chosen by the original act ability of your grade three, your greater vanguard with appalled you and his card name, choose one of your units and he gets power 10 does a power to the end of turn. Wait, that's 20K? That's 10K power. It gains 10K power. I'm trying to think in podium skill again. Uh, look at top five. It's five. Something. It's five k for every two cards. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Now. So what's the other bill? Yeah. yeah. Uh, auto draw. When this card is chosen by the original auto ability above your system codex, exceed. Uh, soul charge one. Energy charge one. That's a thing. I know, right? Why does it integrate? Why are they both effects in drop? Because the first effect is when it's chosen by Impaldio's act ability. So Impaldio choose Impaldio Cannabis one, you put something from drop into gauge, you look at top five and call a card. So when this goes into gauge, you give your mm. Vanguard 10k power, so your Vanguard's a little bit bigger. The second effect is whenever you're on the defensive side, you take a damage, the uh, set order activates, you choose this, put it into your gauge zone, your Vanguard gains 5k power, and then its ability activates, you soul charge and, counter ch uh, and energy charge. 
Okay, now I fully understood it now. I was wondering why the, the hell the drops was like, okay, so it's... Okay, now I see it. Okay, now that makes sense. But, uh... So it's a very the... interesting, like, I'm going to soul charge and energy charge while you're attacking me. Mm-hmm. Are you really going to run something so you can put in the drop zone just for that? I mean, yeah, why not? Bitch fodder. Yeah, fair. Got a point there. Whatever happens, happens, man. But this one is the iffy one if you can find space for it. The next one, though, is not a never iffy one. I think this one is very, very, very funny. Uh, we have Headway Router Dragon. And before you make any jokes about Wi-Fi connectivity or any of that, I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> oh, it was coming. It was 100% anyway. it was coming. Oh, yeah. Anyway, its effect is auto when this unit is placed on rear guard. If you have an auto mod gauge, energy blast three, look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to one card with different card name from this unit and grade less than or equal to your Vanguard from among them. Call it to Rearguard and shuffle the deck. And then auto Rearguard. When this unit boosts, if you have five or more auto gauges, Soul Blast 1 and this unit gets power 5k, making a 13k booster. 13k so, booster. Really with, cool card. Yeah, like it uh, brings out, you have more chances of bringing out your grade 3, I forgot what it's called, but the main one that you want to bring out. Exactly. I, and not correct. only that, you can really make a board out of nothing because you can go in Paldio, look at top 5, Call this Energy Blast 3, look at top 5 again, and just make 3 cards on the board for nothing. Mm -hmm. or Correct two. me if I'm wrong, no, wait. One, but... 2... 1, 2. One. Yes? Right now, there are there's nothing in Brick A that calls from the deck specifically that is generic, right? Not calls from the deck, but calls during battle phase, right? Okay, cool. That's one I didn't know. But yeah, this is good. Even I can tell. Yeah, this none is good of Brent Gates volume. cards. Exactly. None of Brent Gates cards can actually do the thing you're asking. But regardless, this is still just a good card. It's another way to deck filter. It's another way to make board. And it's a finally a card that uses energy in the damn deck. Anyway. So yeah, we, so that was all uh, three cards. Thank you again. No, sorry. There's two more. I lied. We have five cards to cover. So Hector. You get the honors of reading the first one. Oh god. This one is a grade three. It's called Triumph Dragon User Grandpa. I'm assuming it's Kagro. Because I can't see a thing, but I'm assuming it is. Uh, yes. Continuous Vanguard. All of your other grade three units get intercept and plus 5k shield. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Uh, act, Vanguard, once per turn, cost, kind of plus one, and discard a card from your hand, and choose a grade three, or, uh, choose a grade three card from your drop, call to rear guard. If you called Roaring Thunder Dragon, Triumph Dragon, this unit gets triple drive until the end of turn. Okay, so, not bad. And then, auto, Vanguard, once per turn, at the end of the battle, this unit attack, choose a Roaring Thunder Dragon, Triumph Dragon, on your rear guard, cost, say, I said, stand up! Stand that unit, and this unit gets plus 10k, uh, and it gets power tusk into the turn. When this unit, uh, when saying the thing is a cause, it is it's a chosen card. Uh, try not to cause trouble for the people surrounding you. Yes, that is actually yeah, the reminder text. Yep, that is actually the reminder text. <laughs> yes. I fucking love this card. I said, stand up, you. Everything else. I wonder how many people. This is. How many people are actually going to be able to use this at a tournament and we're just going to hear, I said, stand up, bitch. In English at this current point, nobody, because we never have, uh, haven't gotten confirmation if we're even getting the other promos on these promos in English. But mm. JP, whenever this gets some uh, official tournaments, every so often you might hear in the distance, I said, stand. <laughs> well, I don't know about the Japanese. The Japanese are really, you know, whatchamacallit, societal conscience where they try not to bother each other so you make you like a little the japanese 
TCG Weeb players. You're not wrong, but the majority of Japanese don't even like to talk on the train or the subway too loudly on the phone. You've been to I'm Japan, so you have seen shade, it. But... Okay, cool. I'm going to give you one example that might be wrong, might be right. Have you seen the average idol fan? 100% them motherfuckers are loud. Them motherfuckers are loud. Case closed. Anywho. Well, agreed, agreed. Right. That's one of the promo boss units that we got. And as uh, every other one except for Lyrical, we have our last one for the quick start decks. Who knows, maybe Lyrical gets one, but later down the road. But the last one, Os Largest, or technically, saving everyone from Os Largest, Chrono Makimo Doshi. It's the Korokoro Koro boss that has the Os Largest name in it, and its ability, and it only has one, is Auto Vanguard once per turn. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, cannon plus one and put one of your other rear guards into soul. Choose up to one card from your soul with a different grade from the card put into your soul for this cost. Call it to rear guard, and this unit gets triple drive until the end of that battle. Very simple effect. Let's say it's like, it's not bad. Well, this is really the bigger one of it's, it's not bad, but also not good. So, Oss Large, comparatively, like, it's weird. All of these have been weird whenever they're referencing the star decks they, they are trying to copy. Uh, Black is just busted. Not just because it has the Ostrom name in it, but because it also, for some reason, has the Velstra name, so it has access to all the Velstra cards. So, Black's just stupid. Uh, mm -hmm. The Savara one is interesting, but it really only just unrestricts itself and doesn't do much gels. The Bebe Bebe one is very cool looking, but doesn't also do much else. Grandpa's probably the best out of the uh, uh, out of all of them next to Black because not only is it triple drive, it also gives more shield value because of the Grade Threes you run. It has Triumph name, which means if you do everything right. Your rear guard is swinging with double critical because it can, because it gains critical if you soul blast the triumph dragon, yada yada yada. And on top of that, it's a basically a free plus 10k restand. Mm -hmm. That is. And then you got all largest. <laughs> and then you got all largest is promo, where it's like, okay, uh, you are literally just put something in, put something out. Can't be different grade triple drive or counter blast. And if we compare this with Os Largest, Os Largest only ability next to Finding Persona Ride was Energy Blast, call a card from Soul, give it 10k. So you're not sucking up anything into Soul and you're not getting triple drive, but you were still calling something out and giving it 10k power. This doesn't give the 10k power. Yeah. Like the only what... merit I can give this card is, Os you know, all the Star decks have their support grade three, right? Mm -hmm. Os Largest's support grade 3 was an effect that said when this card is put from rear guard into soul by any ability, if you have an Os Largest Vanguard, yada yada yada, you can soul blast two cards that are not itself and draw a card. So basically with this card you can swing with that, swing with this, put it into soul, call something else out, soul blast two and draw a card now. So it just activates that so you don't have to worry, but it's the same, like I said, it's it just doesn't feel quite right. Then again, it starts. I don't know. Grandpa was better. Yeah, grandpa was definitely better. Grandpa was so much better. Anyway, uh that's been it for the leaks. Very short leaks. And like I said again, yes, no, we're not doing that. We're not covering that. No, no. I didn't touch it. If you want if you want to see if you want to see those cards, I'm gonna link down to those cards. You can read them yourself, but otherwise, no. Also, can I just point out that in Slovenian trends, the biggest one is Russians. <laughs> I'm not the only anyway. one who noticed that. And I'm not the only one who noticed that, right? Look, because you got it has Russia, it's got Putin, Biden, Kamala. <laughs> anyway. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on, we technically have one more card to cover, but it's not fully out in the sense that we don't know it's full of fat because where we saw it, it's getting covered by a finger. 
That card is apparently from Sky uh, Skyride, and its name is Heart Opening F F Furia. It's a Dark States card that apparently says something along the lines of Auto Rearguard when this unit boosts. If your opponent's something, more than likely Grade Three or something, and you played an Order this turn, uh, something, something, something gets 5k until the end of turn, something, something, at the end of that battle, put this unit into Soul Draw card. Oh, the uh, Dark States um, Shenry-esque clone. Presumably. presumably. Exactly. The Dark States Dog, the Dark States Shenry, something. Costs and conditions are a little bit out the window yet. It still does play an order. I don't like the fact that it says, and you played an order this turn. The translation might be off, so it might not be an and, it might be an or, just like Shinri and Dog is. But until we see the rest of it, there could be something secret there, the, the actual condition. Because, like Dog and Shinri, like Dog was, oh, you have more rearguards than your opponent. Shinri was, oh, your opponent has one or less rearguards. So this probably has some sort of condition next to the order condition to have it active as well. Yeah. Also, isn't the... Yeah, isn't the Skyride dude a Dragon Empire user? And Akina yeah, but a... just because he's a Dragon Empire user doesn't mean that other people in the manga have to play Dragon Empire. Oh, true, but true, but I'm looking at the fact that he's a Dragon Empire user. Akino over here is a Cater, so why the fuck are they holding the Dark Side's card? I don't know, man. I don't read the manga. True. So can we go up and talk about the Russians? Right, Hector, drop it, drop it. We got to talk about something else. We got about talking about strides back inside of the... Ah! <laughs> so, Hector, uh, you ready for set six? Okay, part of me is it's more Thegria support. On the other hand, it's more Ava support, which Ava has been in the top metas for the longest of times. No offense, it needs. A oh little yeah, bit of that nerf. promo fucking bu buffed her up so much. Yeah, no, no shit. Like even before that, it was it was Chrono J or Ava back in the day. Like it's still, so, so more support is also scary. Rora, it wasn't always at the top, but it's also fucking scary. The rest of them, mm -hmm. chaos pops up every now and then, so it can get scary with the right pilot. Uh, Thagria was just kind of there. She's just there for fan service. I forgot what the other motherfucker was. Yeah, Tomiura, yeah. Tomiura did things every now and then. So, like, I understand some of them need some love. The other ones don't need no fucking love. Ava's a... Don't forget Michu. That. Don't forget Michu. <laughs> Michu, as, uh, Michu, as we saw, got a fucking upgrade. In I the... know. She's finally going to be in this set because we're not getting Dragon Empire. We're not getting... Oh, sorry. We're not getting Lyrical in this set. I, I just wanted to mention Michu because, oh, God, she's busted. <laughs> Yeah, she's busted. Uh, I am not a fan of more fucking G units in D series. So, okay, so we don't know exactly per se that we're getting G units. From the cover picture of set six, as we saw, it's just Kronos Command in the background of Lo uh, Roa. Yes, yeah. Kronos Command was a stride, but what the actual lore implications here are, I do not know. I don't read the lore. I have no idea what's going here. I think I remember someone telling me it's something like a projection slash uh, the spirit of Kronos Command or whatever. I have no idea. Yeah, I haven't read the Figer Regalis lore because I don't think it's finished. I might be wrong on that one. So I wanted to read it all once it was finished, everything. So I have no idea what the fuck Kronos is there either. But so it, the reason why I was hype. also saying... I. Yeah, it's hype, but also the reason why I say it is because we're also getting a lot of new cards like we were previously talked about, where it says if you have a G unit zone or something, you have a G if your opponent has a G unit, you do extra shield. Yeah. So yeah, I that's don't, a bit if, foreshadowing. Yeah, so we're like if they introduce more G units, as long as it's not like increase the deck size a little bit again, if it's just more options they have, I still don't like that. Uh, so we didn't just see the cover, got a little bit extra information. One of which is the fact that apparently, finally, we're going to be getting the Fire Regulus as a Regulus piece in this set. 
Now this one, I am very, very much intrigued by. You do know that whenever we first got the announcements of these glitter units, not as a cards, but actual units that exist that they're doing lore of, they told us about the fire regulus and about all yeah. these units. Yeah, the whole thing is- And we has never a saw it. Mm -hmm. The fire regulars, they have been searching for it since the very like the beginning of the story. That's the whole reason why they're on this journey, whatever. So I'm curious to see what it does as an actual well, effect in the game. If it's, if it's the end all be all, we're searching for this regular piece story lore thing. Uh, I can only imagine what the effect's going to be. Hector. What? Can you imagine if, can you imagine, hold up, can you imagine if all the glitter units got access to a G zone where they can only run one card and the only way to ride into or use that card is to use the fire regulus. No, I don't want that. I, so that's a terrible speculation on my part, but I'm, with this new I, unit, I, I want to say that it's more of there's a possibility that I could deal a damage. Like, let's say you damage. play the... Maybe? Like, the, it's a fire regular, so it obviously has to have something like that. So I could say, like, play this if you're whatever, deal a lot of damage to your opponent. Kind of like that, Well, it's you know? a fire regular that looks super green. <laughs> Yeah, so my first instinct was like Pot of Greed, but I was like, we already have Pot of Greed with uh, Caliburn. Yeah. So, well, only time will tell. I do, I am a little bit, I am a little bit scared because of the Ooh. accumulation of uh, what I said of, imagine th this is the end all be all, we're searching for this regular piece in the story. So vice versa, usually you think, okay, so this thing needs to do something busted. But now my brain went, oh, wait a minute. We had villains that had like, Oh, look at Gize. Oh, look at Griffagila. These are the end all be all boss units. Them as cards. Oh, this is shit. True. You know what I just thought of? Uh, ping a damage to your opponent and you heal a damage. That'd be cool. We haven't had actually offensive regular pieces in a, in a sense. Like, four battles are most offensive next to Chalice. It's technically set up. More than yeah, oh yeah, four but all is yeah, chalice is our most offensive one then. Yeah. Check us chalice is per activates persona ride and the whole shebang. Yeah. Anyway. Everything else is it. One last bit of news regarding set six is the fact that not only are we getting the glitter units, obviously, more than likely we're probably gonna be seeing some support for encounter cards, so I can see potential for a new Maelstrom, potential for a new Minerva or something in Genesis, potential for a new Vanquisher, yada, yada, yada. Oh, Not yeah, Vanquisher, so it'd sorry. be... Uh, no, yeah, Vanquisher, I said it right. Uh, no, Dragonic. Vermilion, the other Vermilion. V, Vermilion. Yeah, Dragonic, Kaiser, Vermilion, the Blood, uh, Glory, Maelstrom, Platina, Ezel. Platina, Ezel. What's her name uh, for Minerva? I forgot. Regalia Minerva something. I forget. I don't know what. Yeah. Maybe we get a stride. Who knows? But there's no. potential for those to get upgrades like Silverthorn did. But. Yeah. Exactly. But not only that, we're also getting Graham Grace and Favernil upgraded boss units. They are confirmed in set six, right? They are confirmed in set six. And they apparently are also confirmed to be in Dear Days 2. Dear Days 2. I'm still kind of like on the fact that they may look like a grade four. You don't, 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 just don't, don't, don't. Let's not never say we didn't. Agreed? I mean, look at Graham Grace. This motherfucker is the one who really upgraded. 
I forgot what his I name know. is. Favreau looks like an orgeyser. I, I understand that. 100%. He looks like an orgeyser. And that's kind of the only reason I want, I want him. Just because he looks like a fucking orgeyser. And I want orgeyser back. But Graham Grace, I forgot what his name is. Something Satan, whatever. But Regis or something like King. Regis mean King. Like Kingly. So he looks like a great four to me, honestly. He really fucking does, which scares the living shit out of me because it never occurred to me in my head when you said it. <laughs> anyway, it's so it's Purgatory Dragon, Great Deity, Favonil Rangald, and Sword Saint King Divine Dragon, Graham Gray Siege. Yeah. And Divine. yes, these also look like stride names, which scares me. Yeah, so like it, it's, it's, it looks a little grade four-ish. I don't think strides, but definitely grade four. God and besides damn, the are we original uh, start decks from D, we haven't seen the grade four, have we? So I have a very, very bad fear that we might be getting something of the sense of Great Forest slash Strides. Not only, like you said, because of all the G unit cards we've been getting inside of set five, but also lore wise, because if you, this has been a point that's been made multiple times before, back in G, it was said that G units are future units come to the present. Correct. So where are these future units? Because we are in the future. We're three fucking thousand years in the future. I'd have to look back at the lore, but I don't think they specified when in the future they said that. I just said exactly. they were in the, there were future possibilities because the word has like three or four different forms. So there are future <laughs> possibilities okay. of that. But it didn't say how many years in the future. Exactly. So enough speculation, enough uh, tinfoil uh, things aside. I think we can end it with this last bombshell. And that is the fact that we have revealed or All have been spoiled. Your king. Alfred Faded with king. wings. Yes. Faded, yeah, the faded King, king. Razael. The full name we don't know yet exactly because of thumbs covering it. But apparently it is called Faded King. And there's some speculation going that it's not called Razael exactly or something. The, so basically, I saw some comments going, well, uh, it doesn't say the exact same name. So certain support cards might not work type deal. Yada, yada, yada. You know what I just realized? Shoot. Up. Oh. Uh, above his persona ride symbol, there's a little extra blue there. Well, yeah, it's a star. The not the twin drive, like right in between the twin drive and the persona ride. You see that blue? Yeah, there? yeah. It's the same type of star that's like in the bottom left corner above the normal unit name. It's the same type of star that's in the divine skill in the bottom right. It's just a star in the background. Oh, okay, okay. So to show that he has a divine skill. Okay, okay, cool. I was thinking maybe that it's where he has a new one. Uh, I was looking at that and I'd have to. Yeah, OK, never mind. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But speaking of which, my God, does he look fucking majestic? He does fucking look majestic. I think he already had the four wings. I can't tell if he now has six because it looks like he has three on the left he, side. No, here. no, no. He has four wings, but he has a cape now. Is that a cape? That's a cape. Oh, no, he has six wings. Yeah, look, look at the look at the left side. There's like a bottom one right underneath where like his cape ish looks where okay, his cape doesn't look like a cape. It looks more like a I don't even know what the fuck you want to call it. Like right there it's, on the left, you see it's a cape, but no, there's it, a wing it, right. Yeah, there's a yeah, wing see, to the bottom left and right, but that is a cape. Yeah, it's like it's is that, what do you call a cape with slits? It's still the fucking cape. I guess it's still a cape. I don't know, man. I'm not a cape ex expert. Yeah, but yeah. Also, the his sword looks like a Scalibur-ish. Very cool. His armor is definitely very fucking cool. 
Like everything about him. Uh, speculation, Tinfall hat back on. Are we gonna get other Divine units and Destined units upgrades like this? <laughs> well, considering as you put it, there is only one king. Um, possibly no. The possibility of them getting different units, yes. Evil, well, yeah, there's I, a whole speculation now because of Sibyl now is the evil one that there is a Destin King. Ooh, 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 I can see that. Yeah, next week's episode basically confirmed it. Yeah, so we have the Faded King and the Destin King. It feels a little left out that the other ones don't get a King slash Queen version because there are only one female. I don't know what the hell Zora count says. <laughs> thing. <laughs> Like, I, I do think it's just going to be those two to kind of finish out the season. Because mm -hmm. here's one thing. With us getting glitter and then doing basically what they're doing right now in the anime, I honestly don't know what's planned after. I don't know if it's like going to be like a whole new season where they're trying to fight the, the Faded King, yada, yada, yada. But if this season is basically finishing the arc of these characters, um, what's going to happen after set six? I uh, don't really know. I mean, they planned it really well to just kind of give us... Because we're assuming we get the Faded King in set 5, right? Faded, Faded and Destined King in set yes. 5. Yes. So we're assuming yes. we get that. And then Glitter to kind of break it off. And then again, start new. And set 7, the new season. Who well, knows? Only time will tell. Well, with this confirmation and a couple of things that are happening next week... Because next week on Tuesday stream, we're getting support for Lurskaria and Rotovisor. Rotovisor needs support. Rotovisor he needs needed support. support so bad. He looks so fucking cool. And does absolutely nothing. <laughs> he looks so fucking cool. Like, I have waited so long for, drag for uh, Nova Grapplers to be brought back in. And I was keeping my Brent Gate cards just for that, but I'm like very sorely disappointed. And one more thing, Thursday stream, we're not only seeing two generic triple rares for Dark States mm. and Stoikea, but apparently they're also making the Sweet X Sweet Trio finally into cards. I have no idea who the hell they are. So Sweet X Sweet is a normal order that says cannibalist one look at top five call a unit that's it it's a grade two normal order and it had three oh. characters on it that never became units and now they're becoming units and also getting another normal order as well oh so like the uh the wishy-washy from Brent gay the, the the sisters battle divine sisters for catered all those it could something of similar could happen yes okay makes makes sense but the most important part about this is the fact that we're getting generic triple rares for Dark Saints and Stokea, which means we're getting generic triple rares basically for every nation, which mm -hmm. ba basically solves one of the questions of why the fuck was Eugene a double rare. Every nation is going to get a triple rare generic. Every destined one is going to get a support card because if they don't, they're screwing shit. Yeah, because the Apollo has gotten one. Exactly, and then more than likely every Faded one is also going to get a triple rare with confirmation with the Faded King. Now, not everybody's probably going to get a new version, but I can see everybody getting a triple rare support card for those uh, Faded decks. Wait. We know that the Faded one, uh, Leo La Mirada, is getting a triple rare. We're getting Faded Oh yeah, Ketter King. might be the only one that's... Yeah, yeah Ketter so basically has all of its triple rares confirmed. Yeah, so the only one that's not getting a triple rare is Dustin One Alden. Hold up. Exactly. So there one is one is... more interesting tidbit, if I can get to it. Oh, there, oh, there, there it is. Give me your... Wasn't there a new Regalis piece uh, set for set five? Not that I know of. Oh. So. Uh... So Hector, Three, six, 18. Yeah, it's missing one. So Hector, because of the way card codes are at this current Dragon moment, we have Eugene, a Dragon Empire Grade Three, having the code of zero twenty. 
which Still means that all the way to 019 can be potentially triple rares. The only thing... Now, actually, it's almost confirmed that all triple rares because we also got Dragon or Gnam or Ghanim, which is a 23, which is a Dragon Empire Grade 1. More than likely, all of the nations are going to get four double rares. That covers all of Dragon Empire's double rares, which means, yeah, more than likely, we're getting 19 triple rares. 19, because because if you look at the first of the triple R, uh, you have three that is obviously reserved for Dragon Empire. Then Dark States gets three because we have seen two, but the last one's there. Then two for Brent Gate, and then three for Brent Gate. Gate. Three, my bad. Three for Brent Gate. So there, there's a three, and then two above Cater. But then maybe the oh, fourth God. one, and then there's just Okaya underneath those, and then so, Lyrical underneath. It, it's it more likely makes, Keter getting four. It would make sense. Destin when Alden gets one, Leo Lamoretta gets one, the Genera, and we and get Razael. Razael, the, the uh, Faded King. I can see that because the only other explanation is, like you said, Dragon. So my only other idea would have been like. Oh, no, we don't have that. No, I don't know what that really is, because more than likely Dragon Empire 3, yada, 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 and then the last slot could be a nationless. They could pull another Griff of Gear with the Faded King being nationless or whatever. So then it is a Faded... So it would be... Okay, so if that is a last one being a non-generic, then that would make sense that the Faded one would not be Barga. So more than likely... I, f I feel like the whole Keter is going to get four triple rares is the most likely scenario because if we follow what's been happening in the anime, I can assume that the Faded King is going to be a Varga card. I can kind of see Faded King, Varga, yada, yada, yada. So that's probably going to be a, dra a Dragon Empire triple rare next to the um, triple rare support card we see for Overcharge next to the generic triple rare. Keter gets a fourth one. Everything's fine and dandy. Everything where it needs to be, yada, yada, yada. I can see that. I can see it. Not happy though. Why not? The only reason why I was like, I was explaining this in the uh, group chat. I don't want to see an evil version of it, or it's basically another mask because I don't want to see another card. No, no, but no. I, and I don't want no. an evil version because we've already had the reverse units. You know, that's like I'm like the whole evil version trend of it. We've seen it multiple times. It's. It's more likely not going to be an evil version. It's basically going to be the exact same as Faded King Razael. It's just going to be mm -hmm. another version of Varga that's called Destined King. It's just used in an evil way in the anime, but it's not an evil version like Mask or Reverse. Which I will be happy with that, because that just means more Varga support. Exactly. But with all that being said, I think we can finally end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching or listening to episode 233 of E-Time. If you liked the episode, please like, share with your friends, comment down below what you think the Fated King is, what you think the uh, Destined King is, what they're going to do, yada, yada, yada. But if you like what you hear, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell to get notified. Maybe bring them a member for some awesome perks. But with all that being said, I've been Phil. I've been Hector. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye, -bye. I I, uh, I I always fill with something on V time, and this time it was dice. I don't know why. He I needs a fidget spinner. I don't know why.